Buckle up. Welcome to Hannity, because we are less than 12 hours away. Robert Mueller's public testimony is coming. Yes, we'll get some questions answered about the witch hunt. Expectations, the hysteria, the breathless reporting has already begun. But look who's running the show. The cowardly Adam Schiff, Jerry Nadler, two of the biggest liars in Congress, hyping tomorrow's hearing as a major turning point in their fraudulent Two and a half year witch hunt against the president, four separate conclusions, four separate investigations. They have lied again and again. They have presented what is nothing short of a hoax, multiple conspiracy theories, made false promises, always claiming the president is guilty of something. They can't say, but something. Conspiracy, collusion, Russia, 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 defrauding our elections, obstruction of justice, some other phantom crimes. Their hopes and prayers have always come up empty. I expect the same. Tomorrow shouldn't be much different. But let me be honest, if Mueller keeps to his word, he's going to stick to the report as the report says, as the report says. That's what the Democrats are asking. And that very report was clear. No conspiracy, no collusion, no grounds for obstruction. And remember, according to Mueller, legal precedent on whether or not a sitting president can or cannot be charged because of DOJ policy or constitutional considerations was not a factor in the special counsel's conclusions. But tomorrow, the Democratic playbook is clear, it's obvious, it's transparent. They want Robert Mueller to contradict his own findings and implicate, smear the president, give them that one soundbite that they they and their friends in the media mob will play over and over and over and over and over and over and over again so they can have another 30 investigations for the next 50 years. And meanwhile, as Republicans, my message is to you tonight, and I'm not a registered Republican, I'm a registered conservative, but you Republicans have a responsibility tomorrow and frankly a golden opportunity to perform actual oversight, a broader audience than you will usually have, even fake news, CNN and MSDNC, the conspiracy channel, their viewers will be watching too. And what you do tomorrow counts. And you are the ones that must demand accountability from Robert Mueller. There are so many important questions that have never been asked or addressed. And tomorrow, that's your job. What happens tomorrow will impact on a deep level. What is the best constitutional republic God has given man? Equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws. This will impact generations to come. Because I don't want some weak, feckless Republicans in Congress to blow it. Well, we've been following this story, and I'm just going to try and lay out a basic fundamental tutorial for these weak Republicans that have no clue to follow. Let me be clear, though. This is not me telling people what to do. Conservative lawmakers on the Intel and Judiciary Committees, they don't need my advice. Devin Nunes knows more than I do. So does John Ratcliffe. So does Jim Jordan. So does Matt Gates. So does Louis Gomertz and many well-informed others. But sadly, there are, well, more than a few Republicans. You need to pay attention and you need to do your job tomorrow and you better study up. And if you need some help, pay close attention, because some of you probably are not well informed on this topic, which is frankly pathetic. And if you're a Republican that fits into that category, pay attention. If you haven't read the Mueller report, that makes you even more pathetic. And I'm sure there are some of you out there. Now, tomorrow night, my goal, I don't want to come on the air here at this time tomorrow and tell you, the viewers, the American people, that they blew it, that they had a golden opportunity. So to literally prevent that from happening, I'm going to try and assist for the American public's sake, because lies, conspiracy theories, and a hoax have led most of the media coverage. But here's my humble advice if you're interested. Always start with the basics. Hannity rule number one, no question should be longer than 10, 11 seconds. Move fast. Ask succinct, direct questions, yes or no questions. It's important to get in as many questions as time permits. Yes, no, move quickly. Mueller refuses to answer, fine, move on to the next question. Remind Mr. Mueller that you only have five minutes. You want answers to these questions. My second piece of advice, start at the beginning. That would be Hillary Clinton. Listen closely, here are some questions. Now again, I'm only touching the surface. Mr. Mueller, 18 U.S.C. 793, the Espionage Act. Mr. Mueller, you're a career law enforcement officer. If you have classified top secret information on a private server, does that violate the Espionage Act? Yes or no, sir. 
remind him this is important if we will have equal justice under the law. If he says that was, well, I didn't look into that, I don't know, move on to the next question. If anyone in America, Mr. Mueller, had email subpoenaed and they decided to erase and bust up devices with hammers and destroy the hard drive and remove SIM cards, would that be a slam dunk obstruction of justice case, Mr. Mueller? If he answers yes or no, doesn't matter. Keep going. If he doesn't move on to the next set of questions, you move on quickly. Mr. Mueller, when did the counterintelligence investigation into the Trump campaign begin and why? Mr. Mueller, what about your original mandate? State the mandate. Acting AG Rod Rosenstein ordered him to investigate possible coordination between the Russian government, members of the Trump campaign, and any other matters that rose directly from that investigation. Mr. Mueller, in your view, did your mandate allow you to investigate FARA violations, yes or no? Taxi medallions, yes or no? Loan applications, yes or no? Tax fraud, yes or no, Mr. Mueller? Mr. Mueller, when did you first hear about the phony Clinton bought and paid for Russian dossier full of Russian lies? When did you first hear about it? I don't know. Around when? Tell us when. Learn, when did you learn that Russian dossier became the bulk of information used in four FISA applications to spy on a citizen and the Trump campaign? When did you learn? Around when did you learn? Mr. Mueller, as a career law enforcement officer, doesn't the information in a FISA warrant need to be verified as true before presented to a judge? Mr. Mueller, give him some history. The Hill recently reported the FBI had a spreadsheet on detailing the dossier's claims. They found over 90% of the dossier was full of lies. Mr. Mueller, State Department official Kathleen Kavlak warned the FBI and DOJ about the dossier's bogus claims. They used it anyway. What do you say? Mr. Mueller, the DOJ official, Bruce Orr, he raised August in 2016 questions about Steele's credibility. Hillary paid for the dossier and that it was never verified, but they used it anyway in the FISA warrants. Does the FBI have an obligation to immediately, when they find out that it's not true what they put in those applications, do they need to go back to the FISA court with that information, yes or no? If Russia collusion was your mandate, how is it possible you didn't investigate campaign op research bought and paid for by Hillary Clinton filled with Russian lies. How is that possible, Mr. Mueller? Why not at least refer it to another office for further investigation, like he did with Cohn and taxi medallions? At any point, Mr. Mueller, did you think to investigate if there was a premeditated fraud committed on the FISA court to spy on the Trump campaign? Mr. Mueller, in your final report, the dossier was hardly even mentioned. That is a lion bought and paid for Russian dossier, paid for by Hillary Clinton. Why did you not investigate that? You had time to investigate loan applications, taxi medallions, and taxes. Why did you not think that was important when that goes to the heart of your mandate? Did you know that the FBI paid Christopher Steele? Did you know an oligarch paid Christopher Steele? Did you know Hillary paid Christopher Steele? Did you know the FBI paid Christopher Steele? Have you ever spoken to Christopher Steele? If so, how many times? What did he say about his dossier full of Russian lies designed to hurt Trump and help Hillary in the election? By the way, did Bruce Orr try to act as a conduit after Steele was fired for lying and leaking? In other words, there are notes that Bruce Orr has. Did, were you aware that Christopher Steele was trying to get answers and send you information while you were special counsel? And do you know that Christopher Steele, in an interrogatory under the threat of perjury, says, I have no idea if any of this dossier is true. Did you know he said that? When did you know he said that? You don't know exactly when around when did you know he said that? Does that not shock your conscience? Now, you chose not to make any of issue of this in your report. Why, Mr. Mueller? And if you had such a broad mandate to investigate election interference, why didn't you look into evidence that Clinton sought Ukraine's help? And the DNC was working to get Ukraine's help to get dirt on Trump to help Hillary in the 2016 election. Why didn't you investigate that? Does it matter if the, if the influence is coming from Russia or Ukraine? Does that matter? Next, it's important you've got to cover Mueller's staffing decision. Mr. Mueller, simple question. Is it true you chose Andrew Weissman personally, what the New York Times called your pit bull? Mr. Mueller, did you ever read License to Lie by Sidney Powell? that talks about Weissman's god-awful, horrific track record of withholding exculpatory evidence. 
Were you aware of that? When were you aware of that? Were you aware that Weissman was a devout Democrat who was at Hillary Clinton's victory party? By the way, who did the vetting and hiring of the rest of your staff? When did you become aware that your team was only made up of big-time Democratic donors and zero Republicans? Were you aware that Jeannie Ray, who worked for you, well, she worked for Hillary Clinton on the Clinton Foundation as her lawyer. Why was she on your team? Do you not see a conflict of interest? Why did you fire or did you fire Strzok and Page? Because we know Andrew McCabe says he did, did it. It's been reported you didn't save Strzok and Page's cell phones after you became aware that they had an anti-Trump bias. Why? Why did you send those phones back to its, its, you know, whatever the factory that they're made in to get cleaned? Isn't that basic law enforcement 101 save the records? Do you regret only hiring Democrats? At the very least, do you realize the appearance of political bias and impropriety in your investigation? Mr. Mueller, at what point in your investigation did you realize there was no collusion or conspiracy? Why did the investigation continue after you learned the fundamental truth of what you were investigating? Now, by the way, the issue of obstruction, that must be taken head on. Mr. Mueller, were you having a tough time on the issue of obstruction? Or did you tell, not tell the AG, Rod Rosenstein and others, DOJ policy constitutional considerations were not a part of your thinking when it came to a decision not to charge the president with a crime? Did the president exert any executive privilege during your investigation? The answer is no. Did he allow your investigation of a full access, your team full access to the White House in terms of their campaign staff? even the White House counsel, which I think is insane? Does the president have the authority under Article 2 to fire an FBI director? Or even you, did he not have the constitutional authority to fire you, Mr. Mueller, if he decided to do so? Tell us about the interview with President Trump the day before you were hired as special counsel. Is that true? In that meeting, you spoke to the president. Did he tell you you weren't getting the job? Did he give you a reason why he fired James Comey? Yes or no, Mr. Mueller? Why did you not recuse yourself under those circumstances, well, considering you were denied a job by Trump the day before? Is it fair to say, Mr. Mueller, that you're friends with Jim Comey? Were you angry at his firing, Mr. Mueller? We know that Comey leaked government materials to get you appointed. Is that a potential violation of law? Could that be a violation of the Espionage Act, sir? Are you proud of the way you and your team treated George Papadopoulos and had foreign spies looking into him and that exculpatory things that he said apparently were withheld? Are you aware of that? What about your treatment and your team's treatment of Lieutenant General Michael Flynn? Well, General Flynn served this country. He was a combat veteran, 33 years. Apparently, he's been cooperating with your office for a period of time. Is that correct, sir? He pled guilty to lying, but the FBI agents interviewing him interview him, he didn't think, they didn't think he lied, right? But he made a plea agreement anyway. Isn't it true that he likely made that plea agreement because he was going bankrupt? He had to sell his house. He could no longer afford legal counsel. Is it true the reports that this 33-year-old veteran and his family, his son who was in business with him, was threatened by law enforcement, Mr. Mueller? Are you aware of that? Are you aware that your team did didn't take the plea to lying to the FBI that he had to, even though the FBI agents interviewing him didn't think he lied. Do you think he did it maybe to save his family? Do you find that type of prosecutorial tactic fair, sir? You're, I'm sure, proud of you. Proud of the fact that we treat a 33-year veteran of this country who risked his life for this country this way? We know that your buddy James Comey bragged in an interview that he took advantage of the chaos in the Trump administration on day four when he sent his agents in to interview Flynn, something he said he wouldn't do to Obama's team or Bush's team, does that bother you about your friend? Yes or no, Mr. Mueller? Now, Comey did this after his deputy FBI director, McCabe, well, he told Flynn he doesn't need a lawyer when those lawyers were going in. Do you believe in Miranda rights? Do you think it's the right way to treat a 33-year veteran of this country, sir? Would you treat a veteran like that? Let's look at some of the questions posed by our own Greg Jarrett. They drilled down even deeper on the deep state. Mr. Mueller, did you investigate Christopher Steele, Fusion GPS, Glenn Simpson, how they supplied Russian information to the media, the FBI, and the DOJ to influence the election? 
Did you investigate whether John Brennan and James Clapper spread the Russian information about Trump to conspiracy theorists like Michael Lizakoff, David Korn, and the Washington Post? Isn't it true, Mr. Mueller, your investigative team interviewed Christopher Steele at least once, likely twice or three times? What did he tell you? Did you interview confidential informant Stefan Helper? What did he tell you? Isn't it true that Halper provided the FBI with exculpatory information that Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, did not conspire with the Russians? Why was that not adhered to? Is it true that Bruce Orr shared dossier information with your pit bull Andrew Weissman and Mr. Ahmad in early of August 2016? Shouldn't they have recused themselves since they were early witnesses to the dossier's contents? And they were told it was not verified. Why did you select Aaron Zelby, who represented, oh, Justin Cooper, you know, the guy that helped set up and administer Clinton's email system? Didn't he smash Clinton's BlackBerry devices, or isn't he accused of that? Now, the final FISA application and the third renewal to surveil Carter Page and also spy on then-President Trump, well, that was done in June of 2017. You were the special counsel. Mr. Mueller, were you either aware of this renewal? Were you involved in this renewal? Was any of the information presented to the FISA court verified? Was the Clinton dirty Russian dossier still the bulk of information in that fourth FISA application? Were you aware that much of the application was based on Steele's unverified dossier? And when were you aware of it? You ever discussed with Rod Rosenstein the prospects of his recusal from the case? Wasn't Rod a witness in the same case that he was supervising? Why didn't you demand his recusal? Did the special counsel team ever interviewed Rosenstein as a witness? What did he tell you about the president's reasons for firing Comey or his suggestions that the president fire Comey? When you met with President Trump on May 16, 2017, why didn't, tell, why didn't you tell him you were considering, the next day it turns out, taking the position of special counsel to investigate him? Why did you re your report edit and misrepresent a telephone message left by Trump attorney Dowd with Michael Flynn's lawyer, Robert Kellner? Isn't it true that the old the Office of Legal Counsel opinion did not prevent you from rendering a conclusion on whether the evidence did or did not support obstruction of justice? As you can see, we can go on and on and on. Keep it tight. Keep it short. If he doesn't answer, move on. If he starts rambling, Mr. Mueller, I only have five minutes. I don't have enough time. Yes or no, sir. Ask as many short questions as possible. Your mission should be to inform the American people about a dirty dossier used to literally spy on the opposition party candidate, filled with Russian lies that Robert Mueller ignored. Let the American people know the truth. Also breaking news on the eve of this Mueller testimony, he actually made a last-minute request that one of his top deputies, a man by the name of Aaron Zebley, accompany him during the hearing. Wow, this is pretty interesting because this guy served as Mueller's chief of staff at the FBI. He also previously represented Justin Cooper. Well, that's the former Clinton advisor who was a key witness in Hillary's email scandal. He helped set up the secret server. Can't make this up. Moments ago, the president tweeted, just got back only to hear a last-minute change allowing a never-Trumper attorney to help out Robert Mueller with his testimony before Congress tomorrow. What a disgrace to our system. Never heard of this before. Very unfair. Should not be allowed. Now we have the rigged witch hunt and a rigged testimony of Mueller. I guess he's there as a little blankie security in case Mueller's practice sessions were not going well because apparently he's been practicing all week, as so has Nadler. Mueller's request to have one of his top deputies present at tomorrow's hearings, not the only major development over the past 24 hours. Yesterday, a letter from the Department of Justice instructed Mueller that his testimony must remain within the boundaries of the public report. Predictably, the media went nuts, saying, see, Barr doesn't want the truth, accusing the attorney general of trying to silence Robert Mueller or intimidate him ahead of his testimony. For almost an entire news cycle, they were totally feigning their fake, phony outrage as usual. Take a look. They're still scared he may go rogue. They're still a little bit scared to that 1% possibility. Everything we know about Bob Mueller, he's a rule follower. I think it's incredibly arrogant of the department to try to instruct him as to what to say. It's part of the ongoing cover-up by the administration 
uh, to, to keep information away from the American people. You don't need to tell him to stick to the four corners of his report. It's like telling a plant not to move. He didn't need this yeah. letter. Okay, really? Well, that didn't happen. Now, there was only one problem. They didn't have all the facts. It was Robert Mueller himself who requested the letter. Ouch, the media mob and Democrats rushed to judgment again.